I got this table for $5 at the flea market. As usual, I start out by cleaning it with White Lightning from Dixie Bell. Flea markets are great, right? <laughs> it's very dirty. Um, not as bad as it could be, I suppose. I love that little bow in the front. And then you want to follow it up with water. So you want to rinse it. I always keep mine in a spray bottle. Next, I want to give the piece of scuff sand. While I'm sanding, I find that it has some areas where Whoever painted it before dripped paint and it dried. So I use the carbide scraper. And if you watch my videos, you know I'm not a real big fan um, or I just can't get the hang of the scraper. So I thought this was a perfect time to put it to use. And it did help me out. I think the paint that someone used was latex. So it really grabbed onto those um, drips and bumps and I was able to scrape those off and of course after I did that then I went back over it again with the sanding sponge and smoothed it out uh, so I had a nice transition and then wiped it back again um, with the, the cloth. And as I wipe it back, I find more areas that need scraped. I'm going to use a decoupage paper from JRV or Jamie Ray Vintage. I love this butterfly um, paper. It's a botanical paper. So I'm working to position where exactly I want it on this tabletop. So there's a nice little ledge in there. So once I get it positioned, I actually use my fingernails to just uh, make a crease in there. And then I can um, mark it so I can cut it with scissors. I really didn't have everything planned out for this uh, design plan, so I went to this first and then I um, started choosing colors and the design kind of grew on me as I went. But I'm just smoothing it out and creasing it with my fingernail. Then I'm able to cut along the creased lines. Easy peasy. I stop whenever the light uh, doesn't allow me to see the crease properly and then I can flip it around and go the other way. I could have saved more paper but I wanted the design to be kind of centered so uh, this way I think was the best way for me to get the most bang out of my buck. And I have um, some now two sides of it that I can use individual butterflies on smaller projects. So I've chosen to use Vintage Duck Egg from Dixie Bell. I'm going to frame the top of this tabletop and leave the white area because that makes the best background 
for uh, the, the decoupage paper so you can see through it. So I'm using the Zebra Palm Pro brush to cut in along the outside. I do come back and use a rag to wipe off some excess, but keep in mind this doesn't actually have to be perfect. And later on in my design, it kind of um, indicates to me uh, that I can use a little shading in those corners. You'll see what I mean when we get there. This was one of those uh, days in central Pennsylvania when you can't count on the weather and I was inappropriately dressed. I kind of froze all day yesterday. It was in the 50s, but I just, I thought it was warmer than it was when I left. So I paint the rest of the piece. I get a first coat going. As I said, I love that bow in the front of this piece. I just think that it's really cool. So definitely it's only on one side, so that is the front of the piece. So I'm mindful of that when I apply the decoupage paper as well, so that my design faces the front. I'm only doing the top part here because then I'll flip it and do the legs. It'll be much easier that way. I carefully flip it and just put the top down on top of a stool to finish the rest. I let that dry and then I apply my second coat and then I'm ready for my decoupage paper. So again, keeping in mind where the front is um, I'm positioning the paper and I'm taking my time doing this so that I have it lined up exactly. You don't want it to be too far on one side and a little short on another side. Once I have it lined up, then I use the palm of my hand to press down on the center so that I can begin to apply uh, Dixie Bell's Satin Clear Coat that I'm using as a decoupage medium and sealer. I'm using the Foam and Dandy brush from Dixie Bell. So just fold that paper back and I start in the center and I do this end, getting it real close to the edges. You don't want to miss anything on here. You want complete coverage. If you haven't ever tried decoupage, it's just the best ever. It's so much fun. You get such great designs and you don't just have to buy decoupage papers, although they make your life a little bit easier, but there's so many sources, um, napkins and fabric and wrapping paper and you name it. There's so many things you can decoupage with. Now's a good time to see if you have any big wrinkles going on. Um, don't press those corners down quite yet so that you can lift them back and smooth it out. Then I'm able to pull back uh, to where I've already done and complete the rest.
Now, I'm not one that will freak out if there's any wrinkles. I think it's nearly impossible to get it absolutely wrinkle-free. Um, but I think, especially with this design, um, that wrinkles maybe will lend itself a little bit to the sort of vintage appearance. I love this butterfly print because it's more botanical than fancy. <laughs> so I think this, um, as I kept going with it, I my design developed. Like I said, I was thinking along the lines of feminine and Mother's Day and all that whenever I started the piece. And then as it grew, I realized that it would be an equally pleasing uh, kind of masculine and feminine piece um, just because of the colors in it and the insects and stuff. So I thought it was kind of a cool thing. I pictured in a living room uh, with books on it and, you know, I really, really fell in love with the, the print on it. So I continue to work that uh, decoupage medium or the sealer around and just making sure that I get it down along the edges and smoothed. And then I even go back and use my fingers to press out um, what I saw was coming up, showing up was the creases. So um, it's... It's definitely easy to do. And like I said, I embrace the wrinkles. <laughs> this is a pretty straightforward application. Sometimes when you decoupage, you paint around it. So when you have the wrinkles, it kind of allows you to build up that texture. So it almost looks like um, brush strokes in an oil painting. Be careful when you see a place where it didn't meet, just be careful using your fingers so you don't tear the paper. Just be ever so gentle when you're doing this. This is no time to rush. get out the gemstone mousse in amber. I love this color because it's kind of bronzy. So you saw when I opened it, it looked kind of chunky, but I just misted it with some water and stirred it and got it back to a real nice thick consistency. Uh, obviously that's why they call it mousse. So I'm just painting with a very small detail brush along a few different areas of interest on this piece. So there's a little um, block there around the legs and I'm painting that as well as that little bow area of interest in the front. So I feel like this bronze color uh, pulled out the browns in the, the paper. I, originally I was going to use gold and then I thought, no, I want to pull out that deep rich Again, I'm kind of leaning into the, the masculine side of this paper and in this piece. Then I decide that it needs some 
of the mousse around the the outside of the um, decoupage area. There's just a little lip there that I thought would make a great frame. And I'm really glad I made that decision because it does indeed make a great frame. So I am letting this dry overnight and then I'm going to come back in and finish it up with some wax. Now it's time for that wax. I start with Dixie Belle's clear wax and I'm using the Best Dang brush, which is a really nice, soft, natural bristle, big brush. And I brush it over the entire surface of the piece, all over the top and all over the rest of the piece. When that's done, I use a soft cloth and wipe it back. Next, I take Dixie Belle's Grunge Gray Wax and a small stencil brush, and I use the brush to go around all those edges right inside that frame and get some in the corners. It's just giving it kind of an aged look. I also like the way it picks up the little wrinkles that are in there. So after I do that and I wipe that back, I get the Best Dang brush again and I use it lightly. Um, I still have the clear wax on it, so um, the gray wax is very light and I just apply it over the entire top and then wipe that back and that just kind of highlights those little wrinkles that are in there and gives it more of an aged look and I really like it. I continue to wax the details with the gray, the gray wax using the same process. I just kind of go over those edges anywhere there's a little uh, change in the in the uh, flatness or the shape of the the piece of furniture. So here I get a little bit too much gray wax. So this is why we use clear wax first, easy fix. Just put some clear wax on a rag or a brush and just buff it out and you can see that that fixed that problem. The excess wax is gone. Let's have a look at how it turned out. If you like these products, visit my description box for my affiliate link and also for my Amazon wish list. Now you can look for the new Super Thanks button that's at the bottom of your screen. Thank you so much for watching today. If you like this video, how about giving it a thumbs up and also share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, you'll want to do that so you don't miss anything. Visit us at LaVintageDecor.company and on Instagram we're LaVintageDecor and on Facebook we're LaVintageDecor Altoona. Stay well!